All right, y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. We are at Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa, and look what we have today. We haven't seen one of these in a while. This is a Honda Rebel 1100 dual clutch transmission. Check it out. No shift lever, no clutch. Oh. Start, no clutch, no gear shifter. Oh, gear shifter's over here. Let's see what happens. Hit D for drive. What happened up here? Let's hit neutral again. Neutral, drive right there. All right, let's do it. It shifts on its own. So we're in, it says fourth gear. There's a gear indicator right there. No clutch to pull in. Okay, let's do a little spin test right here. It's strange doing this without a clutch. I'll look up the wheelbase here for you in a bit. You know what, we'll stop at the uh, motorcycle part and do the wheelbase there. It's uh, very different doing this without a clutch. <laughs> so, picks up good, picks up good. No clutch to pull in, that is so weird. Okay, let's do it. It really pulls, it really pulls. I think it's 86 horsepower. 97 newton meters of torque, 80, 72 foot-pounds of torque. It just kind of shifts on its own like magic. You know, we're in fourth already again. Okay, we are not going to go on gravel. This is a long wheelbase bike, so I'm a little worried about this. Oh, well, at least there's gravel on the road, right? Yeah, we made it. It's kind of got a clunky feel to the shifting, at least at those speeds. Let's take it out on the highway. Just twist the gas and go. Look at that. I think it's a six, I know, it, I know it's a six speed. Six speed dual clutch transmission, Honda Rebel 1100 dual clutch transmission. There we are in six gear, 60 miles an hour. We're talking about, looks like 37 maybe, 36, 37. Seating position, my feet are very wide apart. I can really feel that. Um, my back, I'm slightly lean forward. The seat itself feels very comfortable. It's a cup seat. I am reaching towards the bar slightly, but not a terrible amount. I think it's pretty comfortable. I do like it. You know, I do feel vibration. It's very, it's different. It's, it's, it feels like a Japanese motorcycle, for sure. The dash is kind of hard to read. I don't know if there's an adjustment for that. It seems rather dark to my eye. Uh, the bike has cruise control. Okay, I'm using the uh, cruise control up button to pick up speed here. 59 miles an hour, let's go to 60. We're tacking about, looks like 3,600, let's say. It has kind of a jittery ride. I don't know why that is. I don't know if that's just suspension. Iowa's busiest intersection. And it is busy today. My gosh, people everywhere. Where's my blinkers? No clutch to grab. Yeah, let's see what happens here. We got a line of cars today, a line of cars. It does this pretty well. Very predictable, very stable. I would say it's a very stable bike. Center of gravity, uh, it seems pretty low. I don't have enough experience yet to tell you one way or the other. Oops. So the horn and the blinker button are switched on these Hondas for some reason. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I think this bike has 5,600 miles on it. It's shifting on its own, okay? I would say it's pretty quick. I would say it's pretty quick. And it was, you know, just twist and run. It just did it all on its own. Uh, had I opened it up more, I suppose it would have had harder shifting points. Also, it's in standard mode, and I don't know what other modes there are. It's a very interesting machine. I like the way it feels in the corner. Like I said, it's kind of got this jittery feel. I think that's from the engine, the big parallel twin. But it seems very stable. I'd say the only characteristic that I find odd so far is the jittery 
the kind of the vibration feel, you know, the more than a quiver. I can feel it in the foot pegs, I can feel it in my hand grips, and I can feel it in the seat. It isn't vibrating like an old two-stroke, but it's it's certainly there. I would say it's on par with my Himalayan, at least in the handlebars. I'm not sure what it has for brakes. I know it's a 330 millimeter. I think it's a single disc. We'll, we'll go down to Motorcycle Park and check that out. This is intriguing. I am, uh, I'm liking this in a weird way. Okay, let's do the hill turn test here. Anybody coming? Nope. Nobody behind us. I think the center of gravity is higher than most bikes. Uh, it's not a problem once you get used to it, but it's definitely it's something I'm aware of. And it definitely has a longer wheelbase. That is the derailed grill right there here in Marnie, Iowa. If you get to Marnie, check those people out. <laughs> it shifts on its own. That's just kind of bizarre. I find that interesting. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm, it's, I'm saying it's interesting. I've had a clutch on a motorcycle all my life until the last couple weeks. So that is intriguing to say the least. Intriguing to say the least. If you are in the market for a new or used Royal Enfield Triumph vintage Br British motorcycle of any type, and apparently Hondas, get yourselves down here to Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa. Ask for Jeremy, or Mark, or Randy. Look at this, it just spins around. Now, as I'm getting used to this, this thing is getting easier and easier to do these kind of things with. You know, let's go down to Cycle Park and do a little uh, walk around talk. Oh, they're mowing grass down here. Son of a gun. I wonder where else we can go. Okay, what do I got to do to stop it now? Okay, while we're here, let's look at the uh, what we got here. High lows, flash to press, hazard lights, mode button, horn, blinkers. Ah, shifter button. It's a shift down. I wonder if there's a shift up somewhere. I don't see it. So that must be a downshift button. This is a parking brake right here. Over here we've got neutral, drive, not sure what this is. Automatic or manual, okay. Here's the cruise control down here, and this is the up and down for the cruise control. The kill and start switch right there. Ride by wire throttle. Let's play with the mode button, okay. Here it says standard. I hit that. Okay, we're going through the uh, range. Marker A. There's trip meter B. Not sure what that is. Maybe miles per gallon, 48 miles. Average speed. Okay, that's interesting. Let's hit that again. Rain mode. User mode. Sport mode. Hey, we should have tried that. Maybe we will. Standard mode. Alrighty, we are in sport mode. It's downshifting more aggressively. We're pulling out. It says we're in first gear. It grabs red line almost every time. It shifts on the red line almost every time. What, what do I got to say about it? Well, it's an interesting machine. Let's start with the facts on it, okay? Uh, it's a parallel twin engine, liquid cooled, four valve per cylinder, so eight valves total, fuel injected, fly by wire, 1,084 cc's, single overhead cam, 10.1 to one compression, six speed transmission, but here's the hat trick with the transmission, no shifter. It's got the dual clutch transmission. Here's the minus. Here's the plus. When I was riding it, I did not use those. But the brake is a single 330 millimeter disc. Looks like it's floating. ABS. Looks like a dual pot. Let's see if that's true. No, it looks like a four piston. It's uh, tubeless tires on mags. The tires on the front are uh, 130-70-18. They look like Dunlops. 180-65-16 on the back. Sticking with the front. The forks are 43 millimeters and they got that black coating on them. Isn't that neat? I like the way that looks. Travel for the front is 4.8 inches. That's 122 millimeters. Wheelbase on this thing, and it's quite a long wheelbase, 59.8 inches. And a ground, that's uh, 1,519 millimeters. 
ground clearance of 4.7 inches, it's 120 millimeters. This is a really good number here. The seat height is claimed at 27.5 inches. That's 699 millimeters. Uh, weight, 509 pounds, that's 231 kilograms. Fuel capacity, 3.6 gallons, that's 13.6 liters. I don't know what these are supposed to get for mileage. The engine is supposed to crank out 86 horsepower, and I believe it after riding it. And the torque is uh, 72 foot-pounds, that's 98 newton meters. I think the back suspension is uh, 3.7 inches, that's 94 millimeters. The style is, you're either going to like it or you're not. It is a chain drive, right there. It does have these nifty adjusters on it. Look at that little green zone, red zone. I'm going to throw this out right now. I liked riding it. I liked riding it. I enjoyed it. I found it interesting. Um, I like quirky, odd motorcycles, and this is certainly quirky and odd. It was clunky. It downshifted. You could feel it downshifting. You could feel it upshifting. Uh, when I left here, the first block, by the end of the first block, I was in fourth gear. You know, it just went up on its own, and uh, it, it liked. It, it was in standard mode. It wanted to stay in lower RPMs. Um, when I put it in sport mode, that changed. But uh, I did like how it rode. I was able to do the spin test pretty well. I think it's got a slightly higher center of gravity than a lot of motorcycles I ride. So you had to be a little more aware of that. It could also be just the way it sat. Uh, the wheelbase is definitely longer. I felt very stable when going down the road, like going through curves on the road and stuff. I think this would be an interesting tour bike if you could uh, deal with the gas tank size and if you were okay with the looks. Let's get a closer look at things here. So here's the radiator, the two pipes, two to one, stock exhaust. I think these are all stock. There it says dual clutch transmission right there. Oh, speaking of that, this is very wide between the feet. And I don't know if that's the result of the transmission, you know, or if that's just how the motor is built. But it definitely felt wide. Oh, let's let's talk about this, by the way. Adjustable uh, brake. And I'm going to tell you that the clutch lever is not adjustable because there is no clutch lever. Anyway, an interesting motorcycle. If you all are interested in this motorcycle or something like this, get yourselves over here to Baxter Cycle in Marnie, Iowa. Ta-da! There's the Royal Enfield building. There's the Triumph building over yonder. Talk to Mark or Jeremy. They can help you out. Now get on your bikes and ride. Wahoo!